Good morning and a very warm welcome to you this morning from the churches at Morpeth, Widrington and Great Babington. I am this morning in Widrington URC as we share together in worship in our various places. So let us come to God to worship. St Peter the Apostle says, You have wandered away like sheep, now you have returned to the one who is your shepherd and protector. We come recognising that in our lives we indeed have strayed and wandered from the path that God leads us on. We come to worship today to return to the path and follow again the shepherd who leads us. As we begin our service, I invite you to join in singing at home. The church is wherever God's people are praising, as we remember that we are united as a church in our various places and that God is with us when we worship. Let us sing together. As we worship together, let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the church is indeed wherever God's people are praising. And as we pray together in these difficult circumstances, we affirm our belief that the church is here where we are and that you are here with us. We think of those who are part of the flock, but we know are not with us today because of struggles with their own faith or through lack of technology or because of the isolation they find themselves in. We know, Lord, that you are the Good Shepherd and that not one of your flock will go missing without you going searching for them. We pray that those who are lost and lonely may be found by you and through you may become part of this welcoming family of the church. As we worship today, give your message to us as we hear your word. Give your peace to us as we pray in your name. Give your purpose to us as we go from this time of worship, so that we may be inspired, filled and alive with the good news of your love. Amen. The first of our readings this morning comes from John's Gospel, John chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Our Old Testament reading comes from the Psalms, from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Let us sing together. The King of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth been a real pleasure during my daily exercise to take a walk up the path to the field just to see the lambs and sheep going about their business. One time on our work walk we stopped and watched them and there was a group of about seven or eight lambs chasing each other around the field at quite a speed I can tell you, almost as if they had springs on their feet. But they are very nervous creatures. Whenever we approach the fence, you realise that suddenly all movement had stopped and a hundred pairs of eyes are fixed on you and your next move. And I know that if I went into the field to get close to them, they would instantly be off like a shot. I guess sheep are not predators and therefore very wary of any suspect, unsuspecting visitor that might look upon them as prey. On the other hand, if the farmer were to enter the field with food or whatever, 
they may well approach the farmer with no fear at all. And it's this image that sets the background to today's passage from John's Gospel. In our reading today, Jesus talks of being the shepherd of the sheep, and that he knows the sheep, and he cares for the sheep, but that his sheep know him and follow him. And here, Jesus warns about those others who are leaders in our society, but who do not have the best interests of the people at heart. Those who make a pretense of leading the people, but really only have their own interests and promotion at heart. Jesus says that people such as these are like thieves and robbers who only come into the sheepfold in order to steal the fleeces of the sheep for their own profit and gain. He contrasts this with the shepherd who enters the sheepfold with the best of intentions for the sheep. The thieves and robbers enter the sheepfold by climbing the walls or jumping the fence. But the shepherd enters through the gate of the sheepfold and has the authority to do so. There's a story, and if you've heard it before, I apologise. A man walks into a bar and he orders a drink. And after sitting for a few minutes, he hears a voice say, Nice tie. He looks around, but he doesn't see anybody near him, and so he forgets about it. Some time passes, and he hears the same voice say, Nice shirt. And this time he looks everywhere, behind him, up and down the bar, under the chair, behind the bar, everywhere he can think to look. But he doesn't see anybody. A few minutes later, he hears, Nice haircut. And he can't stand it anymore, so he calls the bartender over, and tells him that he's been hearing this voice but can't figure out who is speaking. And the bartender says, oh, that. That's the nuts. They're complimentary. The truth is there are many nuts out there in our society telling us all sorts of things. And that's the same as true today as it was in the time of Jesus. It is difficult for us to recognise the voice of those who have our best interests at heart, as opposed to those who only look to profit and gain from our circumstances. Let us imagine the sheepfold of Jesus' day that would have been in the mind of those in that society who heard these readings. Rather than being a pen constructed from wood or from metal, it would be an area of land surrounded by three sides by a stone wall, or briars, or brambles. And then on one side would be an open entrance for the sheep to come in and go out of. Jesus says, the thieves and the robbers don't come in the normal way, but they come over the walls or through the briars. But the shepherd enters through the gate. And I guess the gate is that which has been identified by the Old Testament prophets throughout the generations of the Jewish people. In the book of Isaiah, it talks of the Messiah that is to come to be the shepherd of the people. And Isaiah says, the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release for the prisoner." to proclaim the day of the Lord's favour. It is the Messiah who comes in this way who is the good shepherd of the people. Others will come claiming to be Messiah but will be thirsty for power and bloodshed in order to liberate the oppressed. The true Messiah comes in peace with the interests of the poor and brokenhearted at heart. The relationship of an eastern shepherd with a sheep would have been such that they would have had names for each of the individual sheep. Whether it be long nose or spotty legs or big ears, whatever it might be to help identify a particular sheep. The shepherd would know and name each of his sheep individually. And it would be said that the sheep would know the shepherd too, that they would recognise the shepherd's voice and respond to it. 
Imagine that sheepfold being a large area of land. It would be quite common that at night time, the shepherds in the area would all gather together and herd their sheep into this one sheepfold, so that there were perhaps four or five different flocks of sheep gathered together in this protected area. In the morning, when the shepherd calls his sheep, the sheep would respond to his voice and separate themselves from the herd. More importantly, it would be the response of the sheep to the shepherd's voice that would identify those sheep as belonging to that shepherd. And then lastly, Jesus says not that he is just the good shepherd, but that he is the gate to the sheepfold. And that's perhaps a more difficult image for us to come to terms with. But if you imagine this open area of land surrounded by three walls and the briars to create the sheepfold, there would be no gate to keep away predators and there would be no gate to keep in any of the sheep. When the sheep were in the sheepfold, the shepherd would have slept in the gateway in order to protect the sheep from wild animals and robbers and to stop them from wandering off. The shepherd himself would lay down and become the gate. As the gate, Jesus presents himself as the only means of entrance for the flock. And at the same time, the avenue through which the flock would pass to find pasture and fresh water. Jesus says elsewhere, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this image is picked up with Jesus as the gate, the way through which the sheep must pass in order to move to fresh pasture. So I want you to consider in your homes today these three things as you reflect on those passages that we have shared together. The first thing is this, whose voice are you listening to for direction in your life? What is the dominant voice that instructs your decision-making? Materialism is a dominant voice in our society today. Many hear the voice and believe that the only way they will find peace and happiness that they are after is by buying more and more stuff. But materialism is like the thief or the robber that breaks into the sheepfold. It looks only to satisfy its own needs and then leaves us all the much poorer for it. Power and status is another dominant voice. If we can gain positions of authority in our workplace or in our community, then we can be content and life will go the way we want it to. But Jesus warns about the trappings of this power and how so often it comes at the expense of the poor and the oppressed. Or are there other voices that are prominent in your life. The passage calls us to consider the voices that we listen to and whether these voices have our best interests at heart or whether they are like the thieves and robbers in the story. The second thing I want you to consider is this. Do you recognise Jesus as the Good Shepherd? Because as the Good Shepherd, Jesus knows each of us intimately. He has a name for each one of us, whether it be big ears or long nose or whatever it may be. He knows us intimately. He knows our characteristics. And he has only our best interests at heart. Jesus says elsewhere that the Good Shepherd cares for each, for each of his sheep individually, so much so that if one sheep is lost, then he would leave the other 99 to go in search for that one lost sheep. Here in another way, Jesus says he is the gate, that he's willing to lay down in order to protect each of his sheep from the predators and thieves that lurk in the darkness. Do you recognise the Easter story here, that Jesus was willing to lay down his life for us? to save us 
from all that is not good for us and all that threatens to do us harm. And then thirdly, do you respond to the shepherd's voice in your life? Do you know the shepherd as well as he knows you? When he calls, do you respond? Those that respond to the shepherd's call identify themselves as belonging to the shepherd and he will lead them out into fresh pastures and beside peaceful waters. Spend some time today and in the week to come listening to the voices in your life. Get to know the shepherd who calls us and listen for the shepherd's voice calling you to come and follow him. Let us share together in our prayers of intercession and there will be some words on the screen and I invite you to respond with the phrase, the Lord is our shepherd, may we never be in need. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our good shepherd, we pray to you today knowing that you care for all your flock and have their best interests at heart. We pray today for all those whose lives are in turmoil, who are overwhelmed with anxiety and whose mental health is preventing them from functioning properly in even the simplest of daily tasks. Grant them rest in green pastures and lead them to streams of peaceful waters. The Lord is our shepherd. May we never be in need. We pray today for all those whose lives have taken the wrong path, who have been misled by others and deceived into a course of action that has caused damage and harm to themselves and to those around them. Lead them, Lord, along the right path. The Lord is our shepherd. May we never be in need. We pray today for all those who are walking through valleys, valleys of depression and illness and loneliness, where the rays of sun struggle to reach the valley floor and where there is danger of being overwhelmed by the rising mountains around them. Walk alongside them, Lord, in the valley. The Lord is our shepherd. May we never be in need. We pray today for all those who face the darkness of death with the death of loved ones and who themselves may be facing the end of life. Lend them the support of your shepherd's rod so that they will not be afraid and be supported as they continue on their journey. The Lord is our shepherd. May we never be in need. Lord, your kindness and love will always be with us each day of our lives. Remind us of your love in the days to come and help us to share that love with those around us. We offer all our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us sing together familiar words to Stuart Townend's tune, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want.
We come to the end of our service today. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I hope that you have felt something of Christ's presence with you where you are. You felt something of the Spirit and heard something of God's message for you today. Go in peace, keep safe, keep well. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you all this day and all the days to come. Amen.